Hello once again, and today I have a very excellent chess game that I played. Um, I'm playing black pieces, he's playing white. And I'm not sure what, uh, what this defense is called. It may not be called anything, but anyway. Um, it starts out pawn e4. I respond with pawn to e6, looking to do the French defense. He pushes his pawn up. I continue with d5. Now, he does a move here, and this is a legal move. I think it's called an omsalot or something like that. And it looks like this. Um, it it's totally legal. If, if if a pawn goes past a pawn, it can do that. And if it ever moves two spaces. So anyway, so I decided to take with my bishop. And the reason why that was such a bad idea for him to do that, because if you look at this bishop, it's a very good spot. It's eyeing down the weakness of uh, h2. If the king were to castle on the king's side, it would be that's the checkmate move right there. So. It's looking pretty good. He develops his knight, looking like he's going to castle over there. I also decide to develop my knight. He develops his knight on the other side. I castle. He's getting ready to finish out his bishop, which may, if he does castle on the queen side, I kind of want to be prepared to attack there as well. So I decided to do that, develop some attackers over there. He does so as well, and I decide I'll do the same thing. He brings his bishop up, and it looks like he's going to cast on the king's side, which is even better, because now this bishop is excellently placed across this whole diagonal and attacking the other weakness of the king if he were to castle. See, that's why people you, need, you know, people need to pay attention to the other person's pieces. I mean, yes, it is true that his bishop over here is attacking my weakness over here, but it's okay, because I, I can easily avoid this by simply moving a pawn up or something like that. So right now he needs to pay attention to exactly how many attackers are on each side so you don't want to castle on a side where the, you know all my pieces are facing that direction. I mean even my knights are facing that direction. I mean come on now. So he decides to castle and I just continue with my attack. Now if you notice here I have two attackers on the weakness I was talking about earlier. So he needs to really pay attention to what's going on. And if he does decide to, I need so first I need to do something about this uh, knight. He moves up the board of the pawn, and the idea behind this is because my next move would have been to bring my knight up to here, uh, forcing his knight to move. But now he ha he can attack with his queen. So that was the idea behind that. Personally, I think um, knight uh, to b5 would have been a better choice because not only are you attacking my uh, my bishop, you know now pretty much can't go anywhere like I can't I mean I could move up my bishop but then he could just chase it around it's not gonna be very pretty so I think that would have been a better move on his part I decided to bring my queen continuing my development connecting my rooks also adding another attacker because now that queen can attack if I were to take with my knight and that won't be good for me he decides to move up which I think was kind of pointless doesn't do anything you know when people push up with their pawns I just don't know what they're thinking like that's not going to do anything so you know I, whenever people push up with my pawns you never want to push up um, a pawn to attack a knight because a knight can just, just hop right over it's not really a threat so that's exactly what I do and now he decides to move his knight attacking my queen and also a discovered attack on my knight which is actually bad news for me because it's kind of putting a dent in my plans so I decide to move my queen uh up to g4 instead of e5 and the reason why is because if he were to take with that knight then I have to worry about that I mean even though I could just come up and take the knight I don't want to have to worry about that so either way it really wouldn't matter now that I look at it going back now here's the thing I could easily you know push up my knight if he were to take with his knight, I move up here to checkmate. But I'm pretty sure he's aware of this and he wouldn't fall for that. I'm pretty sure he would easily counter this. I mean, he would be sacrificing a piece, but, you know, he would know how to get out of this. So I decide to, um, really, I want to guarantee this win right now. And I decide to do a move which I think was the best move. The best move, in my opinion, is this. Why is this such a good move? Well, I'll tell you why. Thank you for asking. Um, now, I'm attacking this weakness. If this knight were to move, I'm attacking this weakness. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, if you querying move this there, uh, your, the king's just going to take. Well, this bishop over here on b7 is eyeing down that weakness. So if I can get rid of these 
uh, these pieces right here, um, that's going to be great. And you always want to have a situation where if you can get their pieces to move, like you don't want to just want them to move. Like this is set up so if he were to take, that would be fine. If this knight were to take once I bring my knight here, that's fine too because then it's checkmate. So you always want to have a situation where you can actually get rid of pieces, you know, on their terms. You don't, you know, if you know... It, now you could force them to move their pieces, which is even harder. But if if you can put in a situation, it's like, oh, hey, look, here's my pawn. You can take it if you want it. It's right there, you know, looking all sexy. So, you know, anyway. <laughs> all right, so he decides to attack my queen, which is totally fine because that's just allowing me to clear this spot. And now um, he decides to attack my knight. Um, so what, what would you think would be a game over move checkmate? It's this move. And like I said earlier, he cannot, he needs to be really careful how he deals with this. If he moves his king, okay, I am just going to attack his uh, rook. Actually, I'd probably attack his um, his knight instead. I think that'd be a better choice. Uh, well, here's the thing. Yeah, if I were to attack his knight, he would take with his pawn. And then, you know, if I were to do, you know, take queen take, um, he can just take with his queen. So that would actually be a pretty good move. So that's why I would probably take with, uh, take, just go ahead and take the rook. If he decides to, um, you know, maybe move the rook, which maybe would be a good idea. You know, I would take the knight, he would do this, and then would have that situation. So he needs to be really careful. And I don't know if you guys... Already, what would you do in this situation? Because he did the worst of all of them. He took the knight, which people may be asking, you know, why is that so bad? Well, checkmate. And don't forget about this bishop over here. So, whenever, I guess what I want to say is that you always want to keep in mind how many attackers you have on each side. And whenever a king castles on that side, I usually just focus all my attacks on this side. As you can see, I used all my pieces minus my rooks to attack the king's side. So, alright everyone, hope you enjoyed, and have a good day.